Okay, we're on page 10 of this uh, Algebra 1A Credit 5 credit. And let's jump into question number 2. I'm going to let you read the uh, ex explain 1B section on the previous page. But in any case, we're um, using the slope-intercept form to graph and solve the system of equations. So um, these equations uh, in particular. And the slope-intercept form is nice because when you have things written in this format, um, it tells you exactly what the slope is right there. The m is the slope, and then the b is the y-intercept. And the reason why that's nice is because when we get to, uh, to graphing these, um, you'll see why it's nice to have your equations written in slope-intercept form. Okay, so step one, we're going to solve each equation for y. So we're going to write it in slope uh, intercept form and the first one is fortunately uh, already in slope intercept form so we're just going to leave it like that and then the second one I'm going to change the color for is not it says negative x plus y equals 6 and it's this equation right here just in case you're wondering where I got that from so let's move the x over to the other side and when I do that I have it in, in slope intercept form now where y equals x plus 6 okay so the uh, so for this first equation the slope is 2 so the slope equals 2 which is uh, a whole number which can be written as 2 over 1 where 2 is the rise and 1 is the run so what that means is we're going to go up 2 and over to the right 1 unit and for the second equation our slope is going to be 1 right? the slope is 1 which is uh, as a fraction is 1 over 1, which means we go up 1, so that's the rise, up 1, and over 1, over to the right 1. Okay, and then, uh, oh, I forgot the intercepts. The intercept for this is y equals 8, and the intercept for the second equation, uh, let's make that green again, is x equals 6. So, why is that important? Or how does that help us? Let's do the first one, y equals 2x plus 8. Okay, so the intercept tells us where we're going to start. So we're going to start here at y equals 8. And then the slope tells us, the slope again was 2 over 1, so we're going to go up 2 and over to the right 1. We're going to go up 2 over to the right 1, so that's our next point. And our graph actually stops there, so we're going to do the reverse. We're going to go down 2 and to the left 1, down 2 to the left 1, so on and so forth. Uh, and we're going to basically be creating a line kind of like this. Let's make sure it's going through all those points there. So... Um, something like that is that first equation. Uh, and then the second one, second equation was what? y equals x plus 6. y equals x plus 6. So the slope was, so anyway, this is the starting <coughs> point. x equals 6 is our starting point. And then our slope was 1, right? I know it's not written there, but it's technically 1, which is also 1 over 1. So we're going to go up 1 and over 1, up 1 and over 1, up 1 and over 1, so on forever and ever. Uh, let's see if we draw this like this, okay, like that. Um, we will find that our intercept point is right here at, what is that, negative 2 comma 4, and that happens to be our answer. Uh, the point of intersection, or the solution, is negative 2 comma 4. Okay, so that was page 10. Uh, I will let you read page 11 on your own that explained to a part. Um, and then we're going to do page, let me see, not 12, page 13 together. <coughs> we're going to solve this special systems of equations uh, by graphics. So we're going to do basically the same thing that we did uh, on that previous page, except we're going to have special situations here. You'll know what I mean in a second. Uh, let's go with blue here. So the first one y equals negative x minus 2 is already written in slope intercept form but the second equation uh, x plus y plus 2 equals 0 this one is not so again I wanted to say y equals so I'm gonna move the x and I'm gonna move the uh, y the, the 2 as well so negative x or minus x minus 2 so I'm gonna do both things at once right Oh, I shouldn't have crossed those out. Um, but we get y equals negative x minus 2. So if we go ahead and graph um, that first point, 
right? Negative x. This is our starting point, so we're going to start here at negative 2. And our slope here is negative 1, or negative 1 over 1. So uh, a negative 1 slope means we're going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 and over 1, so on and so forth. So let me move the graph up a little bit. Basically, we're going to go down 1 over 1. So it's going to basically be somewhere along here. And let's just do something like... Yeah, close enough. Something like that. And then um, you'll find that if we try to do the second one, look at that. Starting point is at negative 2 as well. And then same slope. So what happens? Well, if you do something like that, you get two lines that are actually right on top of each other. So um, if you refer back to one of the previous pages, we would, we would find out that <coughs> when you have two lines right on top of each other, you have an infinite uh, system. So, so the solutions, you have infinitely many solutions. So that's the answer to that particular uh, question there in step two. Okay, uh, let's hit up one more page here. Uh, let's see, page like 16. So jumping over to page 16, those other pages talk about how to use Desmos to do this. Um, but here's a context. Okay, so in this case, we have a context. Video Club A charges $10 for membership and $4 for movie rental. Video Club B charges a little bit more for membership at $15, but a little bit less uh, per movie. So for how many movie rentals will the cost be the same? And what does it cost? So let's go ahead and write the equation for Video Club A. It charges $10 for membership, so that's a one-time fee. And then this is the variable, the $4 per movie rental. So uh, Video Club A, right? Uh, I think we're using function notation. So let's say the f of x for A okay, is going to be um, the rate, which is $4 per movie x. Right, so as X changes, the amount of money you're paying changes. Right, if you borrow more movies, obviously you pay more money, and then ten dollars for membership. Okay, and and by the way, this question is a little outdated because uh, I don't know how many video uh, rental places are around anymore. But in my day, there were a lot of these. But anyway, so that's the um, that's the function for um, Video Club A, and Video Club B, which will make green, and we're using G of X here is going to be the rate which is what three dollars per movie rental plus a fifteen dollar fee and i think what we should do is, is write it in here as well three x plus fifteen and this is going to be four x plus ten um and i think these are all the same i don't know why they're having us write this over and over again but we're just going to do it because it, you know why not it's not too hard and then let's graph those two equations. So let's do the blue one first. So if it's f of x equals 4x plus 10. Again, this is slope intercept form, so we're going to start at 10. Okay, and then we're it's a slope of 4. So we're going to go up 4 and over 1. So I'm going to count up 4 units and over 1, which is kind of weird because um, we go up 4 small units and then up 1 whole big unit, right? Because um, if you notice here, we're going by 1s for the domain values, and we're going by 5s for the range values. So just be aware of that. Uh, again, the next point is up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1 right there. Okay, so I'm going to try to draw as best a line as possible, something like this. Okay, again, can't, we're not going to be too exact, but there's the line of f of x, which is Video Club A. Let's do the line of Video Club B, which is what 3x plus 15. Oops, 15. So 15 is our starting point, and then we're going to go up 3, 1, 2, th 1, 2, 3, and over 1. It's right there. Um, 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Okay. So if I do something like that and make sure it goes through those points, can it's going to do something like this, right? Okay, and so interpret the solution. Well, where do they intersect? They seem to intersect right. And it's not exact, right? But at five, I want to say, I want to say it's going to intersect here. I know those lines kind of don't look like they're crossing there, but um, 
that's the nature of not having an ex uh, an exact graph here. Sometimes when you draw lines, it, it's not going to come out exactly. But there is a way we can check, right? We're going to plug this point in 5, 30 into both equations. And if they come out to be true, uh, we'll know that, that it, it's a true statement. So let's go ahead and do that. So for f of x, so for f of 5, let's, let's see what happens. So um, let's see. Um, let me see. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. The f of 5 is actually just 30, right? That's our y value. 30 equals 4 times the x value 5 plus 10. And so 30 equals, what is that? 20 plus 10. And 30 equals 30. So that is a true statement for that, for that f of x statement there. And let's check for the g of x. 30 equals 3 times 5 plus 15. 30 equals 15 plus 15. And yes, 30 equals 30. This is a true statement, so it's true for g of x as well. So we say that <coughs> after five movie rentals, the total cost for both video clubs will be $30.